Well, shalom, everyone. This is Evangelist August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday afternoon, coming to you live from our main headquarters here in Lincoln, Rhode Island, here in the New England area. And it's great to have all of you with us as you take time out of your busy schedule to join us as we look at the geopolitical activities of the world whether it's coming out of Israel, somewhere from the Middle East, or around the world, and I give you a prophetic perspective on this geopolitical news story as we're going to do today. <clears throat> Great to see Amanda Tatro in the room with us. I know that many will be uh, coming in after her. And so thank you again for joining us as we come to you Wednesday through Friday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Great to see another dear brother in the Lord, Steve Leslie. <clears throat> excuse me. He's over there in, <clears throat> excuse me, Ohio. And great to see Brother Steve and Christine Davidson Mershwal. And uh, Christine will be going to Israel with us. And I'm hoping that, that that does materialize come June the 20th as we reschedule that tour. I'll talk about that in a few moments. Kim Trainer, a dear friend from Mississippi. She says, uh, hello, Brother August and Sister Patty from Mississippi. I hope all of you guys are doing well out there in Mississippi. Please tell everybody out there, all of our friends in Mississippi, that we said hello, good day to Christine, uh, to Amanda, Steve, and, of course, another dear friend, John Webb, is with us today. And uh, John says, ready to roll, brother. Well, I'm ready to roll too, man. And that's the reason why I ask all of you to have your Bibles open. Have your Bibles ready. Sit down on your chair, because maybe you might be in your car. Don't be driving, though. <laughs> okay? Uh, and have your Bibles open and go along with me. And I'm going to be talking about the Temple Mount, the center of controversy. The Temple Mount the center of controversy. We will give you the biblical history of the Temple Mount, what is happening in the present now concerning the Temple Mount, what's going to happen in the future with the Temple Mount according to Bible prophecy. Now, with that said, this Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to do a special Zoom video presentation. Now, it's only going to be 40 minutes long, and I know that's going to blow by like that, but it's only going to be 40 minutes. I have invited Dr. Todd Baker of Barit Chadasha Ministries, based out of Dallas, Texas. Dr. Baker and I will be discussing. Bill Gates and this vaccine because I'm 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 deeply disturbed as to what I've been seeing Christians posted on Facebook, even pastors. And what these guys are saying is that the vaccine that Bill Gates is pushing is the mark of the beast. And they're even going as far as to say that Bill Gates himself is the Antichrist. I've been seeing Christians posting this on Facebook. And I must say, folks, it's not only deeply disturbing, but biblically it is irresponsible to make such statements. So Dr. Baker and I are going to address this Sunday on split screen. You'll see me and you'll see Dr. Baker. But we will also tie the Zoom video presentation to Facebook. So that way you'll be able to watch it on Facebook, even though Zoom will be doing the live streaming. So that's going to be this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The title of this 40-minute live broadcast between Dr. Baker and myself will be, Is Bill Gates' Vaccine the Mark of the Beast? 
Call a friend. Invite a friend. Have them tune in. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll watch it on my, my Facebook page, on my timeline. Even though it'll go through Zoom, we will connect it to Facebook. Hopefully, we won't have any technical difficulties. You know how that can go, right? So keep that in prayer. Pray for Todd Baker and I as him and I address these claims that Bill Gates is the Antichrist and his vaccine is the mark of the beast. So tune in Sunday night, 7 p.m. for that. Going back to the Israel Prophecy Tour, we rescheduled that for June 20th through the 30th. We'd like to have you come with us. I'm hoping and praying that this virus is gone by then, Israel's borders will be open, and they'll start allowing flights back into the Holy Land. So if you would like to come to Israel with my wife and I, June 20th through the 30th, Israel and Jordan, We'll be visiting Jordan as well. We'll go to Mount Nebo in northern Jordan where Moses viewed the promised land. And then Petra in southern Jordan where the Jews will be held up for the last half of the tribulation period. We want you to come with us. If you want more information about that, all you got to do is see me at the, end, at the end of this broadcast by giving me a, a Facebook message in St. August. Give me more information about your Israel prophecy tour. And we'll send you that, that information. You can also subscribe to my over 500 videos on YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, you can subscribe to my page, August Rosado, on YouTube. So every time a video is uploaded, you will be notified. Subscribe to my YouTube page. Look at all of my videos of me teaching in Israel, Rome, Petra, in southern Jordan. And churches, I've, I've preached that all across the United States. And then follow me on Twitter. My handle is Bible underscore prophecy. Make sure you put underscore in there. Bible underscore prophecy or August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. And look at all of the late breaking news stories I put on Twitter. And my Twitter feed goes into my Facebook page. It feeds into my, my, not my Facebook page, but it feeds into my website. So whatever I put on Twitter automatically goes to my website. So when you visit my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org, you can see my Twitter uh, page there. You can automatically follow me just by hitting that button there, but you must have a Twitter account. It's free, of course. And then you will look at all the late breaking news stories I post there on my Twitter account. And if you get into LinkedIn, you can uh, follow me as uh, Evangelist August Rosado on LinkedIn. I'm not on LinkedIn much either. I only put my videos on LinkedIn. <clears throat> so you guys can check that out as well. So those are the four major social media sites that you can follow me on. Of course, as you know, my speaking schedule is, is next because of this coronavirus. But the Lord still provides for my wife and I. And uh, he's been providing for us financially. Why? <clears throat> because of Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all you need. And he does that through the faithfulness of God's people. You. And, and many of you who have been following our ministry for a while now, you enjoy our plain sense Bible prophecy teaching. Have you guys ever heard me, you know, uh, go sensationalistic on you? Have you guys ever heard me say, this guy's the Antichrist, or that guy's the Antichrist, or that vaccine's the beast, the mark of the beast, or that tattoo polish shop is giving them up? You don't hear me talk that way, and you never will. Because as I said already, we always avoid the drama. We avoid the hype and sensationalism. Let me tell you something. In the day and age in which we live today, Bible prophecy has lost its integrity. Why? 
because of irresponsible prophecy teachers, irresponsible Christians that are doing what they're doing right now on social media. And like I said yesterday, folks, the cults are not even doing this. But look what Christians are doing. Look what's going on in the church today. It's uh, biblically irresponsible to make wild, unfounded claims concerning a person and trying to tie that person in to the Antichrist or a certain vaccine to the mark of the beast. It's irresponsible. And whenever I see these Christians on Facebook doing that, it just, it really gets me upset. It, it, it shouldn't be that way. We need to be good Bereans in these last days. What is a Berean? A Berean is in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. What do the Bereans do? Paul came to them preaching. They said, Paul, we know you're an apostle, but we're going to make sure that everything you say lines up with the word of God. And that's exactly what they did. The Bible says that they searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. And what Christians are saying today are not so, especially when it comes to Bible prophecy. Integrity, need, listen, biblical integrity needs to be restored in the church. Eschatological integrity needs to be restored to Bible prophecy. And that's the reason why it's become a major turnoff to the world today. And then they look at someone like me and lump me in with these same guys. And I told you already, <laughs> I have nothing to do with such individuals in the church or such prophecy ministries that are doing that. We have nothing to do with them. I'm responsible for what I teach. I, I've, I've had to tell a couple of people already on Facebook Stop sending me videos about pandemic. This pandemic video has been circulating all over Facebook. People have been bombarding my, uh, me my, my private messages with this stuff. But I read an interesting article yesterday concerning this lady who put this YouTube video together. Here we go, YouTube again, a great source of information. This YouTube video together about this pandemic. And yet this lady has no scientific credentials at all. None. She's not even recognized by anybody in the scientific community. But she's raking off that video, though, by every time you click it on, she's making money. And yet Christians swallow this stuff hook, line, and sinker all the time. It never fails. Never fails in the church today. Never. We just don't learn our lesson anymore. We have nothing to do with such groups or such people. I'm responsible before God for what I teach. And as Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2, for I give you good doctrine. Those people out there are teaching nothing but bad doctrine. They're doing it on face, especially Facebook, giving you bad doctrine with irresponsible statements. I want to give you good doctrine. And the only way that I can give you good doctrine is if I stay within the bounds of Scripture and teach it for its plain sense interpretation, allowing the Bible to interpret the Bible. It's its best own interpreter. Does it need my help? And that's what we do when we come to you every week, Wednesday through Friday. And that's the reason why I felt led to do this live Zoom video presentation for 40 minutes, Sunday, 7 p.m. And that's the reason why I asked Dr. Todd Baker to join me. Todd and I go to Israel Three times a year evangelizing the Jews out there, sharing the gospel with Jews and Arabs in Israel. I know Todd. I trust Todd. I know exactly what he teaches. I know exactly what he believes. And that's the reason why I want him 
a man who has a PhD, could join me on that broadcast. And that's why I want you to join us on my Facebook page, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, again, uh, invite a friend and um, and check us out. I see that uh, Jessica Marie is with us. She goes, I used to love the prophecy conferences at Gribbit when you preach them. Well, Jessica, I do appreciate that. And, you know, it, it's sad today that you'll probably never see another prophecy conference there again. I'm not saying that to besmirch anybody personally. But, and I, and I hope I'm proven wrong. Jessica, I really hope I'm proven wrong. But I don't think you'll ever see another prophecy conference there again. Michael Popes, I am here, brother. I have you on my channel. Well, that's a blessing, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate that. Humbled by that. And um, let's see. I think uh, we'll have more people coming into the room. I'll have more to say at the end of our broadcast. And remember, every Friday at the end of my broadcast, I always pronounce the Aaronic benediction in Hebrew to all of you. I love doing that every Friday at the end of our broadcast. Stay tuned for that. Now, I want you to take your Bibles. Let's go to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis in Hebrew, Bereshit, beginnings. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 22. Look at one verse with me, okay? The very first book of the Bible, Genesis 22. And we're going to look at verse number 2. Genesis 22 and verse number 2. Here is the chapter where Abraham was commanded to offer Yitzhak. Isaac, his name means laughter in Hebrew. Yitzhak, my grandson's name is Isaac. And all he knows how to do is giggle and laugh. How ironic is that? And so in Genesis 22... And verse number two, it says this. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Itzach, Isaac, laughter, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the, now circle this or highlight this, land of Moriah. Eretz Moriah in Hebrew. The land of Moriah. And offer him there. For a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Now, the Temple Mount is the most sacred piece of real estate on earth today. It is the most hotly contested uh, piece of real estate on earth today. It is hotly contested between Israel and the so called. Palestinians. Now, in Hebrew, it is called Har Hamikdash. Har Hamikdash, or the house of the temple, or the hill of the temple. Also, it is called in Hebrew Har Harbayat, mount or hill of the house, the place where the house of God stood. We're talking about the Jewish temples, Solomon's temple and Herod's temple. The size of the Temple Mount today is 36 acres. Now, that's the size of 25 football fields. That's huge. It was built by Herod the Great around 19 BC. He expanded the Temple Mount and enlarged, enlarged Zerubbabel's temple the second temple. And when Herod enlarged Zerubbabel's temple, it became known now as Herod's temple. Herod employed 10,000 workers as he turned the temple mount into this uh, giant square platform. And on my YouTube page, you can see an animated presentation of how they built the walls and moved those massive Herodian stones 2,000 years ago. When you go to the Kotel, K-O-T-E-L, that's Hebrew for wall, 
Western Wall or Wailing Wall. When you go to pray at the Western Wall today, they just opened it up. You put your hands on those massive stones. Those are Herodian stones. You can differentiate between Herodian stones and stones from the later period. It's like Herod himself put his signature on those stones. Because they are massive st uh, 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 stones that have been, uh, that has like a, a little square ridge in the middle of it. And so that's how you can tell Herodian stones from the first century AD. The Western Wall is the original retaining wall from the Second Temple period that for some reason the Romans did not destroy when they destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. The Temple Mount is also known in the Bible as Mount Moriah, or in Hebrew, Har Moriah, or in Hebrew, Eretz Moriah. Har Moriah, the hill of Moriah, Eretz Moriah, the land of Moriah. And it is first mentioned in what we just read in Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 2. It's surrounded by hills or mountains. Jerusalem is surrounded by hills or mountains, which is the reason why God told Abraham in verse 2, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains or hills, Har in Hebrew, H-A-R, which I will tell thee of. So it's surrounded by hills. This is the place where Abraham took his son Isaac for sacrifice. So when you're on the Mount of Olives today, Har Haritzaitim in Hebrew, Mount of Olives. And you're looking from the east on the Mount of Olives to the Temple Mount where the Dome of the Rock is today. You are looking at the site of Mount Moriah. You are looking at the location where Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice. That's why I invite you to come to Israel with me. So I can show you these places. You can see them with your own eyes. Puts everything in perspective when you do so. Today, the Islamic shrine of the Dome of the Rock, built in 671 AD by the Umayyad Caliphs, it's, it's under that dome where the rock is, where they believe Abraham took Isaac for sacrifice. Instead of Isaac being sacrificed, God provided a ram. But it's interesting. In verse number 6 of Genesis 22, Abraham uh, said, my son, actually in verse number 8, not, not in verse number 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Because in verse 7, Isaac is asking the question. Uh, and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father. And he said, my father. And he said, he me. Here am I. Here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And in verse 8, God said, my son, God will provide a lamb but when we get to verse number 13 of genesis 22 it's not a lamb that was provided by god and verse number 13 it says and abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns and abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son isaac they said uh, God would provide the lamb, but instead God provided a ram. Now, uh, why is that? Because, listen carefully now, because 2 
thousand years later after this event on Mount Moriah between Isaac and Abraham, God would provide a tela, tela, T E L A H. Tela is Hebrew for ram, oh, excuse me, for lamb. God would provide the tela, God would provide the lamb to die for the sins of all humanity. Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Messiah. And that's the reason why in Genesis 22, 14, it says, and Abraham called the name of the place Yehovah Yerdi, or Jehovah Jireh. And it is said to this day, in the mount, talking about Mount Moriah, of the Lord, it shall be seen. Yahweh is called Yahweh Yerdi, or Yehovah Yerdi, or what Christians in the West call Jehovah Jireh. There's no J in the Hebrew alphabet. It's the J should be used, replaced by the Yod. There's, there's the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet that looks like an apostrophe. So it is called Yehovah Yerdi. Yehovah Yerdi. God, my provider. Just as the ram took the place for Isaac, Jesus the Messiah took the punishment we deserve. On Calvary's cross. Calvary is an extension of Mount Moriah. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 16 and 18, Melech David, King David, purchases the threshing floor from one Aruna the Jebusite. And he purchases the threshing floor in 2 Samuel 24. For 50 shekels, the Bible tells us. Now, some would see a contradiction here because they want to see it. And they say, well, listen, we've got a contradiction here between 2 Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicles 21. No, we don't. You see, the author, whoever he was, of 1 Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 25, tells us David purchased the Temple Mount for 600 shekels. Second Samuel 24 says David purchased it for 50 shekels. So they say, well, there's a contradiction there. No, there isn't. Let's rectify that right now. There is no contradiction. But there's a difference of pricing here for the amount of land purchased. Now, follow me carefully here. In Second Samuel chapter 24, uh, it speaks of David purchasing the threshing floor to house the Ark of the Covenant for 50 shekels. Second Chronicles 21 25 mentions the whole territory that David purchased for 600 shekels. So he purchases Mount Moriah for 50 shekels, but then in Second Chronicles 21, he purchases that whole entire land space for 600 shekels. Again, the threshing floor from a ruin of the Jebusite for 50 shekels in 2 Samuel 24, 24. And then in 1 Chronicles 21, 25, David purchased that whole entire area for 600 shekels. There is only a difference in pricing. There is no contradiction because the author of First and Second Chronicles he associates Mount Moriah with the threshing floor of Aruna the Jebusite. As we know that he is talking about one and the same thing. He is not talking about two different locations here. How do I know that? The Bible speaks for itself, folks. It's man that contradicts. Go with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 3, if you will. 2 Chronicles chapter number 3. And you'll notice with me in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 and um, verse number 1. Solomon be, begins to build the temple, the Beit Hamikdash. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 and verse number 1, it says this. Then Shlomo. I'm going to tell you what that name means in a moment in Hebrew. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord. 
Habayat shall Adonai in Hebrew. The house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father, that's 2 Samuel 24, in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornon or Arun. He goes by two different names, Ornon and Aruna, the Jebusite. You see, it's called Mount Moriah and the threshing floor. In Second Chronicles chapter 3 and verse number 1. So we know that he is talking of one in the same things and not two different locations. What David purchased in 2 Samuel 24, 24 for 50 shekels was the threshing floor that was also Mount Moriah. And in 1 Chronicles 21, 25, David then purchased the rest of that area surrounding Mount Moriah for 600 shekels. Stop claiming that you're seeing contradictions because you want to see a contradiction. If you do your homework, you would see that there is two different pricings here of purchasing that area. Now, David desired to build a Beit HaMikdash, a temple, a house or temple. But as you know, he wasn't allowed to because God said, listen, David, you're a man of war, man. You got so much blood on your hands. Someone else is going to do it. And that someone else is going to come out of your loins. He's going to come out of your bowels. Uh, uh, your bowels. So David's son, Melech Shlomo, King Solomon. King Solomon would be given the task of building the first temple. Solomon, Shlomo, his name means peace. That's where we get the Hebrew word shalom in Hebrew. And Solomon will be responsible for building the temple. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse number 1, it says Solomon built the house of God, Beit Elohim in Hebrew. In Mount Moriah, the threshing floor of Ornon or Aruna, the Jebusite. And in 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse number 10, it says it took Solomon 20 years to build the temple. And then we see Solomon's dedicatory prayer. When the temple is finished, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 22 to 61. Wow, what a prayer! That prayer covers 39 verses from verses 22 to 61. He's dedicating the Beit HaMikdash, the first temple, the Beit Elohim, the house of God. He's, he's dedicating that to the Lord. Now, an interesting news story came up recently from the Jerusalem Post. The Jerusalem Post reported, do Israel and Jordan have a corona deal banning Jews on the Temple Mount, question mark. The High Court of Justice in Israel on Wednesday ordered the government of Israel to respond by May 11th to a petition claiming that the government of Israel cut a deal with the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan to keep the Jews off the Temple Mount, for the duration of the coronavirus epidemic. Now, the news report went on to say a journalist by the name of Arnon Siegel, represented by right-wing activist Itamar Ben-Gavir, the government cut a secret deal with Jordan to keep both Arabs and Jews off of the Temple Mount during the crisis. Now, the, the Jerusalem Islamic Waf, which is the religious trust that was instituted by Jordan after Israel's War of Independence in 1948, they were eventually allowed on the Temple Mount while Jews were still banned. Now, that doesn't sound fair, does it? The petitioner said banning Jews while allowing Arabs was unconstitutional, they said. Now, the Arabs refer to the Temple Mount 
in Arabic as Haram al-Sharif. Now that's an interesting Arab phrase. Um, Haram al-Sharif, which is Arabic for the noble sanctuary. They call it the noble sanctuary in Arabic, yet deny the existence of both Jewish temples. They deny the existence of Solomon's temple, and they deny the existence of Herod's temple, despite a 1924 Islamic Waf documented, stating otherwise, that they believe that both those temples did exist. But yet the Arabs today deny that both Jewish temples existed. The Temple Mount has always been Jewish going back 4,000 years ago, before the Arabs even came on the scene. The Temple Mount Sifton Project has recovered thousands of ancient Jewish artifacts dumped into a trash heap in the Kidron Valley. The Islamic Waf illegally bulldozes the Temple Mount. They dig up all these precious ancient Jewish artifacts dated from the first and second temple periods, and they dumped them in the Kidron Valley. And then the Temple Mount Sifton Project was created for exactly that. They go to the Kidron Valley, they dig through these mounds, piles of rubble, and they're finding artifacts dating back from the first and second temple periods. Why would the Islamic Waf do that? To hide the evidence to erase any trace of a Jewish connection to the Temple Mount. Listen, Bible prophecy calls for the Temple Mount to play a major role in the end times. When a third Jewish temple is standing on the most sacred piece of real estate today, on the site where the Dome of the Rock is today, the Dome of the Rock sits on the site where... Uh, Solomon's temple stood for 400 years and where Herod's temple stood for 600 years. Solomon's temple was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. Herod's temple destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD as prophesied by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 through 3. Now, we see in Revelation chapter number 11 Verses uh, 1 and 2. In Revelation chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, it tells us this. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city, that's Jerusalem, shall they tread under foot forty and two months. The forty-two months is the last half of the tribulation period. We see in Revelation 11, the temple of God is measured. That's a third temple. That's the tribulation temple. The inner court is measured, and the outer court is measured. In biblical times, the inner court was a court of Israel, and the outer court was a court of of the woman. Beyond that court would be the court of the Gentiles. Only Gentiles were allowed in that area. They were not allowed in the court of the women. They were not allowed in the court of Israel. They even discovered a 2,000 year old relief that was near the temple that's housed in the Israel Museum today in Jerusalem in which on that relief it said any Gentile caught within the temple precincts would be responsible for losing his own life. Beyond those courts was the broad court called the court of the Gentiles. That court is not measured in Revelation chapter 11. Why? Because it is the time of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles that began with Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians destroying Jerusalem in 586 B.C. will play out even right now throughout the church age, even after the rapture, and during the tribulation period, the times of the Gentiles will come to an end at the second coming of Jesus back to this earth at the end of the tribulation period 
when he puts an end to Gentile world rule. Many misinterpret the time of the Gentile. <laughs> many misinterpret the times of the Gentiles by saying the times of the Gentiles comes to the end at the rapture of the church. No, it doesn't. Because we see it right here in Revelation 11 2. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and they shall tread the holy city underfoot 40 and 2 months. So the times of the Gentiles, Jerusalem under Gentile domination, under the Gentile rule of the Antichrist. Antichrist, the ruler of the revived Roman Empire, the beast that comes out of the sea, the sea of nations. So obviously he's a Gentile. In Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 1. Speaking of Revelation 13, Revelation 13, 11 through 15, speaks of the false prophet. Now that false prophet doesn't come out of the sea like the first ruler does, the first beast. He comes from the earth. And the rabbis say the earth Eretz in, in Hebrew always refers to the land of Israel. And if that's the case, this false prophet is probably an apostate Jew, comes out of the land of Israel. He is also energized by Satan. He's religious. He promotes global worship of the Antichrist. This false prophet is the one that's performing false satanic miracles to deceive the people of the earth in worshiping the Gentile world ruler. In Revelation 13, 11 through 15, it says this, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell, in the, which dwell therein to worship the first beast. That's the uh, Gentile world ruler whose deadly wound was healed, the revival of the Roman Empire. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He makes an image to the beast, a facsimile of him, and places it in the third temple on the temple mount in Jerusalem. Paul the apostle picks up on this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Paul says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except to come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, talking about the Antichrist, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, the third temple, showing himself that he is God. The beast, the Antichrist, desecrates the third temple in what Daniel and Jesus call the abomination of desolation. Daniel 9, 27, Matthew 24, 15. Jesus will return by the end of the space of the last three and one half years, and he will destroy the beast and the false prophet and throw them into the lake of fire. That's Revelation 19, 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before them in which they had deceived the world, they had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burdened with brimstone. Jesus will establish then the Davidic theocratic kingdom to come from Jerusalem for 1,000 years with Jerusalem as earth's capital at that time. The Temple Mount, ladies and gentlemen, is the center of controversy today. But this is also set in the stage for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. Let me give you one more passage here. Zechariah 1, 14 and 15. In Zechariah chapter 1, verses 14 
and 15 tells us exactly what's going to happen in the end times concerning the Temple Mount. In Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14, it says this. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Adonai Tzavaoth, the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great jealousy, God said. God said, I am jealous for Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. I am jealous for Zion, Zion. God said, with great jealousy. God is jealous for Jerusalem with great jealousy. The literal Hebrew, God says, I am aggressively possessive of Jerusalem. Keep your dirty paws off him. Keep your paws off of Jerusalem, God is telling the nations of the world. But notice in verse 15 with me, Zechariah 1.15, God said, I am very sore displeased with thy heathen. Alalil in Hebrew. I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, thinking they own my city. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. That's interesting. In verse 15, let me paraphrase. In verse 15, God said, He was sore displeased with the heathen, and they helped forward the affliction in other words god said i was upset but now they've ticked me off is what god is saying the controversy of the temple mount is indicated that the rapture of the church is so very near i'm just going to say it's extremely near folks bible prophecy is on course to being fulfilled. The Temple Mount today, the center of controversy. But God said, I'll put an end to the controversy because I am aggressively possessive of Jerusalem. God said, I'll put an end to the controversy when I teach the heathen a lesson. The heathen being the non-Jews. When I teach the heathen a lesson. I'm upset right now. God said concerning the Temple Mount. And what they're trying to do. But in the end times. God said. They ticked me off. I will. Judge them. When they tried to take. Jerusalem. From the Jewish people. God said. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The stage is set. The actors are getting into position. The curtain is about to go up on the end time drama. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to know him now. You need to call upon his name now. Ask him to save you from your sins. Ask him to wash your sins away by his precious blood. Ask him to forgive you of all your sins, to come into your life to be your Lord and personal Savior. And if you want to know how to do that, I'd be more than happy to talk with you and show you from the Bible how you could know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that one day heaven will be your home, that you'll be ready for the next main event we call the rapture of the church. And all I can say to that is Maranatha, even so come, Lord Jesus. So as we bring this broadcast to a close, I just want to, just let me see if I can get a couple of the uh, comments here. Charity says, yesterday's lesson was a blessing. Can't say how excited I get. Going through the Bible like that. Looking forward to today's lesson. Charity, thank you. I appreciate your words. Irene White, good to see Irene here. Irene, just hold on. Hang in there. We'll be in Israel soon. I promise you that. She said, I'm late. Taking care for our friend's mom today. She is in hospice care. Sorry to hear, sorry to hear that. So Lisa and I can watch her from 12 to, 12 to 6. 
three days a week. God bless you guys. Appreciate you both. Great to see Stephen Mitch Smith from Natchez, Mississippi. Junior Parker says, oops, I'm late. Better late than never. So, again, I, I appreciate all of you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for our Bible uh, prophecy update. And, again, if you want to get to know our ministry a little bit better, if you're here for the first time, all you simply need to do is go to our website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Go to our contact August Rosado uh, link there and uh, sign up for our newsletters. They go out every single week. And give me your name. Type in your email address. Just request you want the newsletters. If you want to go to Israel with my wife and I, June 20th through the 30th, I'm hoping it's going to happen. Israel's open back up, but the borders are still closed. That could change by the end of May, beginning of June. We'll see. Stand by. We're keeping a close tab on that. But if you appreciate our straight-up, plain-sense Bible prophecy teaching, uh, just please prayerfully consider supporting us. And I put the PayPal link there on the comment box. And you can help support us monthly or a one-time gift. No gift too big or too small. It's your gift that helps us to do what we are doing, proclaiming Jesus' soon return. Your gift sends us to Israel to reach Jews and Arabs with the good news of the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. It's because of faithful people like you that stand behind our prophecy ministry that allows us to do what we do. And I just want to say thank you so very much for standing by us. All of you that are watching right now, you've already, you're already supporting us. Thank you so very much. If you haven't, please prayerfully consider doing so. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube videos. I have over 500 of them. August Rosado on YouTube. And then follow me on Twitter. Look at all my late breaking news stories on Twitter. August Rosado at Bible underscore prophecy. <clears throat> so, as promised, I want to pronounce the Aaronic blessing, the Aaronic benediction, the, the prayer of Aaron, the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, Moses' brother. And we do this at the end of every broadcast, every Friday. Back in biblical times, the high priest would split his hands like this, right? You Star Trek fans, the high priest would split his fingers like this, and he's forming the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Sheen, looks like a fancy-looking W. That's on every mezuzah, on every Jewish uh, home, on every hotel door in Israel. That would represent Shaddai or El Shaddai, um, the Most High. The Kohen Haggadol, the high priest, would... Spread out his hands like this. I'm trying to get it right here. There we go. He would spread out his hands like this. And then he would stretch it out toward B'nai Israel, the children of Israel. And then he would pronounce his prayer on Israel for their health, their well-being, their finances. And I'm going to do the same for all of you today. For your health, your finances, your family, your ministries, your churches. So I'll pray in Hebrew and then translate it into English. Shalom. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the Lord give you shalom. Peace in these very trying times in which we live. I hope you enjoy your weekend. But don't forget, Sunday night, I'm going to do a, a special live video Zoom presentation. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm inviting all of you. And invite your friends to tune in. It's only going to be 40 minutes. So it's, going to go be, it's going to go by fast. It's only going to be 40 minutes. 
I'm going to connect the Zoom video to my Facebook page. You'll be able to watch it on my live Facebook uh, timeline. Dr. Todd Baker and I will be discussing, is Bill Gates vaccine the mark of the beast? Is Bill Gates the Antichrist? We will talk about that. We will talk about that in my broadcast come Sunday. That's exactly right, Junior. Yeshua is our shalom. He is our peace. That have broken down the middle wall of partition between us according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. So, guys, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right on Facebook, via Zoom. Dr. Todd Baker and I are going to tackle this subject that is being irresponsibly talked about by Christians on Facebook, saying that Bill Gates is the Antichrist. His vaccine is the mark of the beast. Stop going to YouTube for your information and your Bible doctrine. We're just going to look at the book. Join us Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So remember, keep looking up. Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Don't forget to join us next week, Wednesday, for our regular Wednesday through Friday Bible Prophecy Update broadcast. But this Sunday night, tune in, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, guys, that's all the time that we have today. God bless you guys. Stay healthy. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. God bless, guys.